Hello, hi. Now, as usual, hopefully by now you know that you're watching Discovery with me, Glory, and this is my weekly vlog. <laughs> this is my <laughs> this is my weekly vlog vlog where I discuss my life's discoveries, discoveries I've made on life, um, either myself or my friends. Okay, so today, I, do you guys remember like a, f a couple of weeks ago, um, I did a vlog on um, I think five or six things um, Ibo Kwan Wushika taught me. And that was from um, the Tala Tara Fela Durutoye um, series that I had attended. Well, there was another one um, which had Fela Durutoye himself. And so today I'm going to be sharing the things Fela Durutoye taught me on purpose and relationships. I know that's such a purpose relationships. But anyway, you guys will get the gist when I start. So like I said, um, Tara, Tara Fela um, Durutoye has a series. It's kind of like a mentoring series for women. And she invites various people to come and speak to us and impart knowledge. I'm just all over the place today with my English. Forgive me. And impact knowledge. <laughs> so um, one, of the, one of the speakers, um, the most recent speaker was um, Fela Durutoye, her husband. And he was speaking to us about finding your voice. Um, but then I've tried to distill these messages into two sections, so purpose and relationships. So I'll start with purpose first. I think many times, remember guys, I did also did a vlog on how to find your purpose. A while, a while ago. So if you haven't watched that, um, please check our playlists and, and find it to watch. Um, I think a lot of times, I, after doing that vlog, a lot of people, I got a lot of emails, how do I find my purpose, all of that. And I think that there's a lot of confusion on what purpose is. And really, listening to um, Sadurite actually helped me, give me a lot of clarity on the topic. Everybody with purpose, everybody always thinks it's about you. Your purpose is not about you. It's actually not about you. Your purpose what you, your purpose is to transform lives. It's to answer a question. It's to provide a solution. So instead of asking, what is my purpose? Who am I meant to be? What am I called to do? Ask yourself, what problem am I solving? In fact, he said something that was so, was so profound to me. He said, your, your, your name, your name should be the answer to a problem. So if somebody is looking for, oh my God, I need to learn about marketing, they should think about you. Oh my gosh, I really, I want to build this house, but I want something different. They should think about you. That is, you are supposed to be solving problems. So let's move away from what is my purpose? Um, what, who am I meant to be? I think if we start to think more about being solution providers, that's where the answer is. So how do you find your purpose? How do you find what your life assignment is? These are the four things that you need to ask yourself. Who am I? What do I do? Why is it important? What am I trying to change or make better? And I think that final question is very, very important. Because the question you really should be asking is, what am I doing with my life that is bringing transformation, that is bringing change? So that's, and so that's a question I've been asking myself. So, what am I? It's not about doing activity. Purpose is not about activity. It's about, it's about point, almost <laughs> put it in crudely. It's about point and kill. So I'm pointing at something. I'm doing something with my life with an aim to create impact. So purpose, your assignment, all of it is meant to create impact. So that's the first thing I learned. The second thing I learned, which is, for me, is very pra was very practical, is this idea of the elevator pitch. So you guys know what an elevator pitch is, right? So basically, imagine you're in, a, in an elevator with somebody for 15 seconds, and they ask you, what do you do? So have what you do summarized in such a way that it tells the person enough about what you do to keep them engaged, that they even want to follow you to another floor, right? A floor that they, they didn't intend on going to. So here is... A, a nice, concise way to frame your elevator pitch. Are you guys ready? Okay. I help A to do B so that C. Do you guys get that? So for me, it can be, I help women become their authentic selves so they can be successful. So my A is I help women to do B. My B is to become authentic, to become their authentic selves and C, so that C, my C is 
so that they can be successful. So did that make sense, guys? So I help A to do B so that C. And I think, obviously, you might not get it right the first time. It's something that you keep on ref refining as your purpose and your assignment, your life assignment becomes clearer to you. You keep on refining that. So for me, it's just a really, really nice, concise way to do that. And I hope, I hope you guys will, will benefit um, from using that as your elevator pitch. The third thing he taught me is this idea of how to monetize talent. So he was saying to me, talent is like, talent is raw material. And the only way you can monetize it is by developing it. Now that sounds so, because it sounds so basic, but it's so true. Because many times we just think to ourselves, oh, I'm talented in this area. Oh, I'm a good actor. Oh, I'm a good writer. Oh, I'm a... But we actually don't develop ourselves. So he, what he said was, the more you develop your talent, which is your, remote, your raw material, the more you earn from it. So look at your talent like the rungs of a ladder. Keep on developing yourself and pushing yourself up that ladder, and then the more you can earn from the talent. And which, it kind of relates to a lot of stuff I've been saying before about investing in yourself and all of that. So that's another thing I learned. Another thing that he taught me about purpose was this idea of your comfort zone. So many times we say, oh, you know, leave your comfort zone, leave your comfort zone. But he helped me reframe this idea. So a fish doesn't live on land. Neither do you see chickens living in water. They live within their comfort zone. So it's not, and he, he was saying that this idea that when you are in your comfort zone, you know, you're not stretching yourself. It's not true. If you're actually in your comfort zone, you know, when you're working hard, you're stretching yourself. But if you're outside your comfort zone, when you're working hard, it's actually stress. So imagine a fish out of water, struggling to breathe. That's the analogy. So the fish is outside of its comfort zone and it's literally stressing itself to stay alive. So maybe it's time that we begin to rethink what comfort zones are all about. So for example, I know a lot of people that when it comes to things that they did, I mean, they already had the natural talent. It, the things that they do comes naturally to them. So they are operating within their area of comfort, their area of expertise. Of course, they've gone for different trainings to hone in on their talent and make their talent better and marketable. But the initial, remember what I was talking about, raw material? The initial talent was there, and that's, that's the area of their comfort. So maybe we should learn to stay in our area of comfort, develop ourselves, as opposed to looking to go out of our comfort zones. I hope that makes sense. Now, guys, the final, the one thing I learned about relationships, I have to, I have to take a deep breath, y'all, because this one, for me, it was a game changer. And if you know me well, if you've been following my vlogs, if you've been following Inspire series, you will understand why this was a game changer for me. And this was on relationships. So we were having a conversation and about men and women and you know men being developed and everything and i said and i raised this question i said you know i feel like there's so much opportunities for women a lot of mentorship opportunities are available now for women and we are creating queens but then there are no kings for us to marry you know and i was very upfront about that and so he did this thing where he he said oh that's a great question girl give me high five give me high five so i was really feeling sharp i was feeling like a smart babe i was like ah i asked a good question in class so right so i gave him the five five that's how he now sha gave us some scripture everything and basically the bottom line we were saying was there is no man that is a king every man that is a king now it's a woman that has made him that king so basically as a woman you birthed your king so he said any woman can give birth to a child, right? But it takes a special woman to give birth, to birth a king. So if, and so for me, I was just thinking, I was just sitting down there, was, I've been sitting down thinking, um, I'm waiting for a ready-made man. Yeah, that's my confession. I'm waiting for a ready-made man. I thought that, look, I mean, I'm developing myself. Look, I'm not even going to lie to you guys. So I've been developing myself to say, okay, this is the kind of woman I'm becoming. I'm doing all of these amazing things. So the guy that is coming, he better be correct. He has to have this. He has to have that. He has to have this. But some line that I was saying to me is like, no, it's also your responsibility to birth the, po the purpose of your man. I'm still struggling with that because I just feel like nobody's helping me birth my own purpose here. So <laughs> why 
can the man not be better in his own purpose where he is? <laughs> but it all makes sense to me because if you notice, guys, that when um, when a woman, when a man gets married, there's something about him, he changes. I don't know how to explain it. And that's the woman, because there's a woman behind him birthing this king. So if you are looking for a king, you are looking for another woman's husband. Time to go and birth your king. Anyway, guys, I hope I've been helpful. Um, feel free to leave your comments in the comment section or to email me on glory at inspiredbyglory.com. Until next week. Oh, no, before I say until next week, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Encourage your sister. Encourage your sister. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Visit our blog, inspiredbyglory.com. And don't forget to leave a comment. And come back next week. Peace. Bye-bye.